Hi students and my dear IES aspirants 2019. As you already know that we are going to start a new batch for the live classes for 2019 IES aspirant IES mains and English literature. From time to time, I am giving you lectures so that the new aspirants may be able to judge and they may be able to understand that how they have to prepare slowly and steadily before even they qualify their IES pre. So yesterday also I have uh, uploaded a lecture on YouTube for you students and that is Paradise Lost Book 1. Today I am uh, giving you a lecture on Paradise Lost Book 2 where I am trying to give you the portrayal of Saturn and the main topic would be Satan as a political demagogue. What is this word demagogue? Demagogue is a political leader who wins a support of the persons by exciting them. So in book two of Paradise Lost, Satan appears to be a kind of politician intent chiefly on attaining the goal which he has set for himself. Usne apna jo goal set kar rakha hai, wo us prakar ka politician usme dikhaya hai. And he is imbued with all the qualities which we generally associate with politicians. उसके अंदर वो सारी खूबियां हैं जो एक पॉलिटिशियन के पास होनी चाहिए जो हम लोग समझते हैं कि एक राजनीतिक के पास होती है एंड अ पॉलिटिशियन इज अ हाईली एंबिशियस मैन हु इज सो ब्लाइंडेड बाय हिज एंबिशियस परस्यूट दैट ही फेल्स टू परसीव द स्टार्क रियलिटीज अराउंड हिम एंड पर्टिकुलरली हिज ओन लिमिटेशंस एंड एज अ रिजल्ट ऑफ व्हिच हिज एंबिशन keeps growing keeps growing and often becomes you know too much and he is generally a posier adopting attitudes postures just to create a favorable environment for himself and also to win the appreciation and goodwill of those on whose cooperation the achievement of his political aims depends he is certainly a proud man but also does not mind flattery whenever it is needed. Jaha zarwat padegi, he is always ready to flatter. And he is skillful. He is adept in the art of making false promises, which he does not intend to fulfill at all. And he is undoubtedly an accomplished diplomat who leaves no stone unturned to deceive people. He is indeed full of wiles and very often hypocritical. He is persistent in chasing his goals. Serving people to the community is one of his objectives, but he has also his vested interest to be fulfilled along with that. And yes, he is an intriguer who employs crafty means to achieve his ends. And he takes decisions in advance and he is not an autocrat. We may also on his credit side mention the fact that a politician has tremendous energy and a strong willpower. Undoubtedly, his energy is inexhaustible and without this asset of inexhaustible energy, he cannot remain long in politics. At the very outset of Paradise Lost Book 2, Satan's pride, Satan's pride and ambition are brought to the forefront. And in the very opening lines, we are told that Satan had been high uplifted to a level which he had not hoped for, but now he now aspires to rise higher even. We are also told that he has learnt nothing from his past failure and that he is still determined to continue his war against God. Despite the fact that his first campaign has been a complete fiasco. While addressing his fellow angels, Satan combines flattery with an assertion of his own importance as a leader. He addresses his fellow angels as powers and dominions, deities of heaven, 
and flatters them further by saying that their immortal vigor can never remain confined within the bounds of hell even though they have been defeated in the previous war against God. And he assures them that their celestial virtues would soon ascend to heaven and would appear to be more glorious and to be more terrible than if they had suffered defeat at the hands of God. In fact, their rise to heaven would infuse self-confidence in them to such an extent that they would not fear a second disaster again. And after thus, or we can say thus, gratifying their vanity, Satan quickly proceeds to assert his own leadership. And he says that he deserves his position according to the fixed laws of heaven and further flatters them by saying that they have used their discretion. Discretion means they have used their free choice in choosing him as the leader. Further, he says that by virtue of his position as a leader, he will be exposed to greater peril because God would inflict him with greater suffering and greater punishment. His position, therefore, should not excite anyone's jealousy. In fact, he assures them to win back their just inheritance. Sari chije vapas la dega. Uske upar vishwas rakhiye. That in heaven, that is heaven, and tells them that they just have to decide between an open war or covert guile as a mode of revenge. And the point to be noted is that through his consultation with the other fallen angels, he wants to give them the impression that he is democratic. Democratic ka matlab hota hai, who can advise, who may speak, but in reality, he has already framed the strategy of vengeance against God. And we can conclude that he understands well the psychology of the mob whose support he seeks. Sari wo cheeje hai iske andar student jo ek politician mein honi chahiye. Satan's craftiness becomes evident when he find, when we find that the scheme which Belzebub had put forward has actually been devised by Satan. Belzebub has merely been used as a scapegoat. Milton here tells us that a scheme so malicious could spring only from the author of an ill means he could only be Satan and nobody else who could plan such malicious things. And the scheme he aimed at confounding the race of mankind in one root in order to spite the great creator. Satan knows full well that he cannot win an open war against God. And so what he does, he resorts to baser strategies to administer a heavy blow to God's prestige subvert and thwart his plans by misguiding and misleading the human creatures who are God's favorites. Satan's second speech too reinforces our impression that he is a seasoned politician. Once again he addresses his followers flatteringly and what does he say? O progeny of heaven, imperial thrones, despite the fact of their expulsion from heaven. When none of the fallen angels volunteer for the arduous journey, he instead of demolishing them, justifies their reluctance due to the dangers involved. He is a lot danger hai and unke reluctance ko wo justify karta hai. And he feeds the ego of his audience by making the task appear dangerous. He then surprises them by offering himself as a potential explorer of the new world created by God. But he does not magnify the importance of this offer. And on the contrary, he makes it appear that it is his duty as a leader to undertake such a task. If we are a leader, we will take such a task. 
and his position makes it imperative for him to expose himself to the maximum peril and this again shows that how shrewd satan is his abrupt rise at the end of the speech begins the assembly to an end and this again reveals his hypocrisy by terminating the discussion suddenly he wanted to nullify any chances of a similar offer from amongst the fallen angels he wanted to hog the limelight and take all the credit for the same and the fallen angels bent their heads to him with awful reverence and extol him equal to the highest in heaven jo wo chahta tha wo kar liya usne satan's tact uska jo tact tha again becomes conspicuous when he tactfully deals with sin death and chaos when he learns that death is unconquerable so finally the author says and the subtle fiend his lore soon learned now milder and thus answered smooth in other words we can say that satan mellows down and tells sin that he has come here not as an enemy but to liberate them both from the dark and the dismal hell and promises to return back and then transport them to a place where they could live at ease and where their appetites would be fully satisfied and again he uses his craft to win over sin and death and the same strategy is adopted by him in dealing with the chaos too he knows that only chaos's assistance can lead him to the new world created by god and so he tells chaos and his allies that he is not a spy out to discover their secrets rather he is determined to restore them restore to them those territories which originally belonged to them but now have been usurped by god thus we can emphatically say that we find a satan yeah we find in satan a true politician well skilled adept at the art of capitalizing on every situations going on he is a true and true opportunist who by keeping in the good books of his supporters furthers his vested interest अपना इंटरेस्ट केवल देख रहा है अपने को गुड बुक्स में रख करके अपने सपोर्टर्स के साथ एंड ही इज अ ट्रू पॉलिटिशियन ही इज अ ट्रू अपॉर्चुनिस्ट वेयर वी हैव जस्ट प्रूव्ड इन दिस लेक्चर